So with the see-through ruler, I'm able to see that my picture is not exactly four inches. It's a little bigger and that is just fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a grid, um, a half inch grid. So that means every time I see a half inch mark on my ruler, I give myself a tick mark. Notice that I even went outside the image because I was close to almost being four and a half inches. Now I'm gonna do this on the bottom of my image as well so that I line up the lines perfectly. And then I'm gonna connect those. And so doing the top and the bottom is gonna be really important. You wanna make sure that your lines are dark enough for you to see. So I would recommend you know pushing kinda of hard. The see-through ruler allows you to make sure that your lines are actually parallel to one another. So you'll look through the ruler and go, okay, yeah, that is lined up in parallel. If you don't grid correctly, your entire project will be distorted and off. So doing this accurately is very important. And the reason I had you guys do a four inch grid is because we are gonna enlarge these to an eight by eight. So on our next piece of paper, we are gonna do a one inch grid, which will make it double the size. You can see that I've finished my grid going both directions and I labeled the top ABC and the bottom. Then I'm going to do each side one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, so that when I go to match things up, it makes it quite a bit easier having everything labeled. Also, I just want to point out that this. Um, bottom edge here, notice that this line is a little bit not parallel to the edge of my photo. Normally that would be a problem, but because it's off where the bird is, it doesn't matter. So a slight imperfection, like a line that's slightly veering out is not going to be the end of the world, but you want to be pretty accurate. So I'm taping my project down to a drawing board and um, I've pre-cut a bunch of 11 by 11 inch sheets of paper and what I want you guys to do is tape it off to become a 10 by 10. So I just want to show you that when I taped it down, let me zoom in all the way, when I taped it down and I use my ruler, I can see that it does have exactly a half inch that I have taped all the way around. Um, these are not cut perfectly. So what I'm gonna have everybody do is tape down your first two sides, just like I did. I have two sides taped down. Then I want you to take your ruler and measure, oops, I need to flip my ruler over. Measure 10 inches. You're gonna do this um, from the right side and the left side. And now the next piece of tape you put down, you're just gonna line up on those tick marks. And give it a nice crease. Um, we wanna have our paper to be flat, bubble free. Um, when we watercolor, you need to tape your paper down because otherwise your paper will wrinkle. Your paper will wrinkle. That's that tongue twister. All right, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So from top to bottom, I'm gonna find the 10 inch mark. 10 inch and then line it up. And now I am ready to start gridding. So I have a 10 inch square. So I'm using a 2H pencil to um, do this grid. So we haven't gone into drawing pencils yet. Um, 2H is basically a pencil that's gonna appear lighter on your page. Um, it's not gonna smear and smudge as much. And this time I'm doing a one inch grid. So at every one inch I did a tick mark. I'm gonna do that at the bottom and connect them. Okay guys, this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, 
So I finished gridding. Um, I did my grid too dark because I wanted you to be able to see it. But see how like right here, how it's super light? That's how your grid should be everywhere because really only you need to be able to see it and you're gonna erase this grid completely later. So you don't wanna leave scars in your paper by pushing hard and you just want it to be very, very faint. So the tricky part is where you have to number and letter. So um, I intentionally cut this paper too big because remember, we're gonna put a shape around your bird, or I'm sorry, your animal. So this whole square, that's like here and here and here and here, are really shouldn't have an animal in them. But remember, I accidentally made mine almost four and a half inches. So that does make me have to use this one, but not these three. So what I did is I put an X here, to remind myself, hey, that box is not used. Then I did my ABC all the way to I. Many of you will stop at H, which will make your life a little easier. And then I did my one through eight, and I have this guy X'd off. And then I did my ABCs again. And I just, just to show you, I used a Sharpie to do my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not eight off the page because my bird head is ultimately gonna be over here and I'll show you how to get to that in a minute. So I have started drawing my bird using the grid, um, just in case you haven't used a grid before. Um, there are a couple different ways to do it. So I'm gonna show you guys the easiest way, which is the dot to dot system. I don't do this way, but um, some people find it really helpful. So what they'll do is they'll like say, okay, I'm gonna put a dot right here between I and H that's about halfway down on my one line. So that would correspond to right here. And then they'd find the second dot and here, third dot here, fourth dot here, and then they just go and connect the dots. If you're gonna do this, just make sure that your dots also have the curves inside so it doesn't just like look like a bunch of connected dots. Like you actually have the curves of the animal. So you're matching that. And that's one really easy way to tackle a grid drawing that helps a lot of people. Um, I usually just go for it. Like I'll just kind of go, all right, I know that at H there's going to be a curved line that's just um, above halfway. And kind of mimic that line. But I do a lot of looking at my, okay, what number, what letter and what number am I at? So I use the letters and numbers a ton. Once you've done the entire outline, you're gonna also wanna do interior spaces that um, are gonna be important to the animal. So you can see that I am doing some major shadows, some feathers, obviously like the eye. I'll do a ton of detail down in the feet. I'm not gonna do the branch, well, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but because I'm gonna choose a shape to go around it, I don't know if I want the branch to interfere yet, but um, I will make sure that I get all those, the major details. I might even do like some of these little feather details in there. And so if I'm looking for that, I'd look at F and four, kind of find the center. And then I would start to draw some curved lines. Now you're gonna notice that for the bird, you wanna be, or for the animal, you wanna be pretty accurate. Um, but for things like branches and, th and organic things that might change, or like pieces of hair, you don't have to be as accurate because nobody will know if you're slightly off. But for the major things, you wanna be pretty accurate. Another thing I wanna note is that I'm drawing everything super, super lightly. Again, using an H pencil. This time I'm using 7H, but you could use a 2H because I think I'll have those out for you guys. And then once you're finished with all the grid, you're gonna go through with your white eraser and you're just gonna erase everything so that that is no longer interfering. A lot of people, um, if you want, you can even wait to erase your grid until you do your inking. It's your choice. 